writers, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm very, very excited to introduce you to Pam. Um, Pam has actually needs no introduction. She's been writing with us for years. Um, but Pam's first anthology of poems is coming out. So I'm very, very excited. It's a collection of poems and an anthology of poems. Um, I'm very, very excited um, to have Pam with us here today. Welcome, Pam. Thank you very much, Mia. I'm very happy to be chatting with you. That's amazing. Okay, I'm going to jump straight in with our questions. So, um, Pam, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, just like, what do you do every day? Um, what do you do when you're writing and what your writing day looks like? Okay, well, I I can never really predict what's going to happen on any given day. You wake <laughs> up in the morning and you think, hello, I'm alive, that's nice. <laughs> and you get up and anything can happen because I live with my extended family. Um, uh, it's a kind of like a, a big extended family house. So we're in the middle bit. It's like an apartment, really. And, you know we're artists and we have an art gallery so anybody can come in um, anybody can want to go to town anything can happen so we just go with the flow but like you know this interview I said to people at nine o'clock I have an interview <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so yeah it's uh, you know some things are planned but usually I get up early in the morning uh, it's my normal time for getting up around about well it depends on the season uh, in the summer, I can wake up really early, half past four, even five o'clock, because the birds are singing and it's light outside. And in the winter, you know, at eight o'clock, it's still dark. But I still, my inner clock wakes me up. So I get up and I make myself a cuppa and I come into the guest room where I do my writing. And then I do some writing. Um, that's usually my morning time is night writing time. But then that can spill over and then other things happen. I have other jobs to do and I can do a bit of writing during the day as well. So, yeah, my day is, I don't have a typical writing day, but if it's typical, then it's morning time. Fantastic. Um, tell me a little bit about these poems. Um, did you deliberately set out to write a collection or... Was it just a collect? You looked at the work that you had and put them together. How did you go about it? Um, I've been writing poems. I suppose I started about twenty years ago. Really, my first poem, maybe a bit more than twenty years ago. No, it was a hobby. I enjoyed doing it. Um, I didn't think I was particularly any good at it, but you know, you you do it, and <laughs> and I belong to two writers groups. And three, if I count um, writers write online, mm -hmm. um, and I find that so valuable. And because of the writers groups, and there were people there saying, oh, you know, I think, how many poems do you have? Well, I've got about so many poems. Well, you know, when you've got 50, think about putting them together in a collection. It was other people's suggestion, really. Um, and I kind of thought, yeah, yeah, that sounds, you know, but I don't know. <laughs> But eventually I did, um, and I got some very good advice, which I, I would like to share with anybody who's got a lot of poems. You want to have at least maybe 60 to 100 poems, and then you print them out. This is what John W. Sexton said to me, and he's a very uh, well-known poet. You print them out, and you put them on the floor all the way around your house. I mean, poems, wherever you look. <laughs> and then... <laughs> You begin and you look at them and you begin to see that there's actually some kind of a, a theme running through them. And then you can you change their place and you put them together. And, you know, it's a kind of a process. And eventually you realize, oh, that's what my poems are about. That's what my collection is about, actually. Um, and then some of the poems are lovely poems, but they don't fit in the collection. So you put them one side. They can go to some other <laughs> collection maybe in the future. And so that's what uh, he told me to do, and I did. And it really, really helps to get the, the sort of the theme, more or less a theme of your collection. So it sounds like great advice. I love it when when things become tangible and you can stack yeah. them in place. So that's yeah. really wonderful. Um, do you enjoy writing? Does it energize you? I love it. I love it. And my day would not be the same if I didn't do some writing. Yeah, it's become my life, really. It's wonderful. 
Um, you mentioned that you're artists and that you have an art gallery. Um, what other creative pursuits um, do you have? Do you paint, draw, dance? Um, I what do. Well, I haven't painted for a while and I need to get back to it, which is the hard part. You know, it's like paddling your canoe and you've got to get it from the bank of the river down into the water again. Um, so, yeah, I, I do painting. I used to do a lot of batik. The, the cover of my book, I don't know if you can see it, it's um uh an, it's, it's a little detail from one of my batiks oh, nice. um, yeah but i do watercolors now when i when i paint i do watercolors so i'm going to be getting back into that now that spring is coming here where i live and uh, the flowers are out again they will they're starting so mm -hmm. that gives me inspiration fantastic um, can you tell us a little bit about the, the publishing journey and how you went once you had your collection put together oh. and what else did you do from there? Well, on the advice of this um, poet, John W. Sexton, he said to me, uh, you should try this publisher and that publisher, but don't try this publisher because they've got a backlog for three, four years. Um, and that was the publisher I, I wanted to try, but... Um, Never mind, you know. I tried another one, and they they took it straight away, which was very surprising because quite often people don't get taken straight off. Um, they liked it. He said to me, "We need ten more pages." <laughs> so, <no. laughs> so you, yeah, we'll publish your book, but you know, we want more. So mm -hmm. I, he said, and it could take as long as I liked to get those pages together. So I had another look at what I had, and I had some highbun which are, you know, Japanese form of um, prose and, and haiku together. And I had a few of those and I thought, well, some of them fit, you know, they've been published in highborn journals and they fit this collection. So I put those in. So that took up maybe five or six pages. <laughs> and then I had other poems, which I'd written, or I did start writing um, in the meantime. Um, and eventually I had my extra pages and sent those in. And then, you know, it's a, it's a it, it has to fit in with their timing as well. So we had the launch on the 2nd of March and it was great. I, I didn't know what to expect, but the publisher was there and um, and John Sexton did um, the, the launch, the intro, intro speech. And uh, people were amazing. There were so many people who came. I wasn't expecting so many people, but it was great. And he sold a whole bunch of copies. So he was delighted. And, you know, I was very happy too. It was a lovely atmosphere. Wonderful. Congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, next question. So you have the book now and it's out in the world. What yeah. would you consider literary or publishing success? In general, do you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got one book out now. When would you consider this was successful? You've made it. It's awesome. Oh, well, when I actually saw it like that in a in a little volume, <laughs> I could hold it in my hands. Um, then, and actually, I said to another poet, I feel like I'm a real poet now. <laughs> and she said, you've always been a real poet. But, you know, it's like when, when you've got it in your hands and you can hold it, as you say, tangible, something tangible. Um, but, you know, if you can't get published, that's, you know, it's it's not it's not a reflection on your abilities. You know, think of all the all the writers that didn't manage to get their work published. I mean, they tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and eventually the book got published. But it's just a matter of what publishers want. They It may not suit their particular brief at the moment. So I. I don't get downhearted if you're writing and you're finding it hard to get published. Um, uh, I, I, I do think it's good to send your work out um, if you like it, but do edit, 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 edit. Um, and that's why I like the writers group because they help you with the edits. They'll spot something. There's a lovely lady called June um, Hunter and she's in the, the online writing group. And she's in our writers' groups. And she, we, I call her eagle-eyed June because she'll spot a thing and she'll get it, you know. She, oh, there, you know, that thing. Um, and she's right 99% of the time. 
think, yeah, that makes a difference. That one word, just take that out. Um, so I, yeah, keep editing. Although you don't, you don't want to edit it so much that you lose all the spontaneity either. I don't know. It's a. <laughs> it's forever finding that balance. It's yeah. just there. do this, yeah. but not too much. Do this, but not enough of that. So yeah, that's I think finding the balance as a writer. Yeah. Um, what was what were the hardest? Like you're saying, there's some themes and they suit. What was the hardest section or the hardest poems for you to write? Do you think? Oh, yeah, the ones that are in the book. Mm. Well, some of some of them I wrote really about 20 years ago and they've but they changed a little quite a bit because mm -hmm. from what I wrote initially to what appeared in the book uh, that there were years of leaving it over there and then coming back to it and you know um I don't know really how to answer that question I, I there's some some poems I've got I'm trying to to say something and I still haven't said it. So they didn't go in the book. They're in that, you know, file where I get back to it one day. Because it's very hard to say exactly what you want in the right way without, especially, I, uh, there's a lot happening at, in the Middle East at the moment with Gaza and Israel and all that. And I've written about three poems to do not only with this particular war, but the history and whatever um, and I can't publish them because I, I'm not saying what I really want to say. It's not coming through. It, it's, it's, um, there's almost like a philosophy I have, but it's not, uh, I need it to mature. It's, yeah, I don't I can't the right words. Yeah, especially with very emotional topics. I find sometimes you yeah. do need distance to be able yeah. to really get your thoughts down and it definitely doesn't make it easy. Um, what okay so besides I'm assuming you read quite a bit of poetry is there anyone in particular that you enjoy when you read fiction what do you read well I belong to a book club <laughs> that's a very good thing for me because uh, a book is chosen for you you know there's a selection of books where you can get enough of those books from the library um, there's a kind of recommended list and I normally wouldn't go and get a novel at all you know I just hardly ever would read novels but I've got into that now I, I was studying homeopathy for years and um, I have a homeopathy practice um, it's very small you know but uh, I read homeopathy books wall to wall I mean that's I was <laughs> like fixated on it um, so it, it's good to diversify and you know read books that you wouldn't normally read the last book I read was Hotel du Lac. It's mm -hmm. it's an old book. I think it was published in the eighties, maybe or seventies. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, it was very good, really very good. Um, so yeah, all different kinds of books, and I love reading the stories online, the short stories. <laughs> um, I'm trying to 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 write short stories. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a natural short story writer. But I'm practicing. <laughs> right. Well, that's what it is, is. We have to learn how to do it. It's a different art. Yeah. So uh, like, you know, you'll go from a poem to a short story. And then if you try a novel, it's unlearning and relearning all of that process again. So yeah. it's interesting how something like a fiction work can influence a poem and how a poem can bring a story yeah. about. It's yeah. lovely how they work together. Yeah. Gorgeous. And then just my last question, you've already given us so much advice, but is there any more advice that you would give to a poet who would like to, to be where you are eventually? Just keep writing, keep doing it, you know? I mean, some people work well in group, and I suppose these are the, the ones that are on um, the writer's right because they, they're coming to a group. Basically, they're saying, I need to get your opinion on this mm -hmm. and I think that's a very valuable thing um other people like to work on their own and they're very shy about showing their work but um, you know I find it difficult to write when I'm in a situation you know like we're going to write for seven minutes that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> I suddenly go ah I don't know what to do but um you know yeah just work away keep doing it keep doing it 
Yeah. And the high pressure, yeah, the high pressure prompt's not for everyone. So um, you can oh. just make it and take your do it a little bit later when you have more time and had some time to think about. So. Absolutely, yeah. And sometimes yeah. it comes in the middle of the night, you know. It does. Think, oh, that's a nice phrase. I'll write it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, the trick is just to be able to read your handwriting the next morning oh I know <laughs> dreadful and also you you kind of uh, if you think oh I'll remember that in the morning yeah I'll say it three times to myself I remember but you never do <laughs> it's such a loss mm. but, um, oh, but thank you Pam for joining me this was absolutely lovely Thanks, to hear your story uh, about your book um, it is I'm so excited for you it's just wonderful so just I hope you'll keep writing and keep writing and keep writing some more and that hopefully there's another one in your future. Well, you never know. <laughs> I will keep writing anyway. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Mia. Thank you for joining us.